Welcome to the show, guys. Um, hey there, business owners, directors, and marketeers. In today's show, I'm meeting Manam Shah from Recruiter Flow, uh, and we're going to talk all about SaaS today. I'm Lucas, your host, as always. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about Manam before we get started with the, with the actual questions. So he is a co-founder and CEO of Recruiter Flow, and he is really obsessed with uh, human productivity and you know, that really ties nicely into the product that the team has been bu building and working on. Um, Recruiterflow is actually his second SaaS company, so he has quite some experience to draw from. And he's from Bangalore, India. And um, actually, he, <clears throat> he mentioned to us that he should be reading a little bit more than he, uh, he is currently doing. So always eager to learn and always to, to learn something new. So Manam, welcome to the show. Well, pleasure is all mine, Lucas. Very good. So tell us about your company. What is Recruiter Flow all about? Hey, so fundamentally, Recruiter Flow is a CRM uh, for recruiters to help them uh, manage their candidates as well as clients. Um, the idea behind Recruiter Flow is that, you know, in, in last decade, uh, the decade that we are about to end, uh, you know, in a few months, you've seen tremendous stride in terms of sales productivity and marketing automation. And somehow, some of these progresses have not reached recruiters. And as, as we see more and more talent crunch, uh, recruiting is becoming more, uh, you know, increasingly more important function uh, in uh, every company. Uh, and that's why a lot of companies are focusing more on how do we make recruiters more productive? How do we get them to, you know, engage the talent in a way that they never could. And that's where recruiter flow comes in. Um, so as I said, I'm obsessed with productivity um, and uh, recruiter flow is uh, my little way of uh, increasing productivity of a very small niche of humans. Very cool. So could you, I mean, it, uh, the, you already alluded to it a little bit, but who would be the types of roles or the type of people who would benefit most from, from the software? Who's using it? Um, so recruiter flow is majorly used by, um, you know, uh, recruiting and staffing companies. Uh, we currently focus uh, on uh, small and medium businesses, so anywhere from two, three recruiters uh, to uh, up to 20, 22 recruiters kind of uh, agencies. Um, so these are the ideal customers. Most of our customers uh, are uh, more proactive recruiters, more headhunting uh, kind of businesses. Um, that uh, go out in the market and uh, hunt the people that they want. And, uh, um, you know, it's generally uh, our customers come from uh, uh, United States uh, and UK. These two are represent the biggest uh, geographies that we have. Makes a lot of sense. Would you mind to summarize maybe the couple of key tasks or key actions that people would do with Recruiter Flow that would really make their life easier in their recruit recruiting jobs? Sure. So one of the you know one of the jobs of a recruiter is just like a sales guy prospecting uh, new candidates and reaching out to them um, so recruiter flow is uh, the only recruiting crm uh, right now that offers integrated uh, emails prospecting tools as well as in integrated email sequences um, we have our customers who have moved from linkedin messaging to uh, email sequences have seen anywhere from 40% to 180% kind of a jump in the response rates. That's first. Wow. Um, and second uh, is we have a small, uh, we, we call it a feature called recipes, which is kind of like marketing automation where recruiters can set up rules uh, that are event-based. Okay, if this happens to this, if that happens to uh, do that. So, you know, uh, you can set up these rules and uh, the ones that we have seen have, uh, who have implemented uh, some of these uh, automation rules uh, end up saving uh, four to six hours uh, a week per recruiter. So, you know, that's wow. almost half a day. Uh, you get extra every week. Wow. So it's like small teams using your tool usually or is it up to big enterprise companies would be using then hours and hours uh, of saving time? So currently we focus mainly on uh, the smaller teams. Uh, this is also a function of, uh, you know, how we evolve as a product. Uh, we are fairly young, uh, and uh, we will be going after a bit market segment uh, next year. Makes a lot of sense. Very, very interesting. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I would like to pick your brain a little bit about how you think about growth, right? And online growth uh, in particular uh, for this um, for this product. Um, what would be the way uh, a recruiter or recruiting manager usually would find your product these days? What would be you know a typical user journey? Which channels would they would walk through? Um, so we have multiple channels. Um, the, the most obvious uh, ones being, uh, you know, um, 
PPC marketing as well as uh, uh, SEO. So we, we've been investing in SEO heavily since last about a year now, and uh, it's, it's getting us fantastic results. Right. Um, and uh, our SEO strategy has been uh, uh, mainly around the tactical uh, questions that recruiters might have. They uh, come on our blog to find answers, get interested, and uh, end up uh, you know signing up or uh, scheduling a demo. Um, on the PPC side, uh, we, we do a little bit uh, on Google AdWords and uh, majority of our PPC comes from uh, other listing uh, sites. And uh, also, um, one of the things that we've been uh, trying since last three, four months and we started seeing some results uh, is user referrals because recruiting is a small, very tight, tightly networked community. And uh, now we, we are at that stage where we have enough customers uh, who can recommend us other customers and how do we actively encourage them to talk about us on social media. Uh, and that has been going fantastically well. So, uh, you know, that's the main three uh, strategies that we have uh, right now. Really good. Are you enforcing this with type of like um, a program, or, um, let's say an affiliate type of a, referen a referential program, or is it more word to mouth at the moment? It's more word of mouth at the moment, but uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, there is active encouragement. Like, uh, you know, whenever a new customer converts within first uh, two months, we, uh, you know, uh, I will go and ask them that, hey, how is it going? And uh, if you like recruiter flow, uh, can you tell your friends? And if you don't like it, can you tell me? Right. So gotcha. we do that. We send out an NPS score, uh, uh, you know, survey. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, actively asking customers, uh, for referrals and if customers, if one of those referrals convert, we send a bottle of, uh, uh scotch or uh, a box of chocolates to customers, right. you know, so it's a win-win. Very good. I really like the options that you have there. If you like it, recommend it. If you don't like it, let us know, right? It's really, really good. So they actually really have, in either ways, they would have a good action to follow up to, which is valuable. Um, tell me about the website a little bit, because you mentioned PPC, you mentioned SEO. What role does your whole website play sort of in your online strategy? Is it key to your business? Is it more an informational hub on the site? Like how, how should we think about your website? Absolutely. So, um, we, so, you know, uh, recruiting or, you know, uh, recruiting tech is an extremely, extremely competitive market. Um, and uh, you have a few seconds uh, to uh, impress your user uh, enough to, uh, you know, give uh, an email ID to you, right? So, uh, so website piece, uh, plays a very, very key role uh, in this. Uh, so we, if, if you look at our homepage, it's, it's completely organized around everything that you can do with recruiter flow, right? How we will make you, um, you know, a, a superhuman and uh, how we will make you a better recruiter. It's completely, uh, you know, centered around that. We made this change about uh, six to eight months back and we saw uh, about 40, 45% jump in our signup rates. Very, very good. Like, what do you think was the major driver of this jump in signup rates? Because, you know, folks are always wondering what are the elements that contribute to this? So we are earlier, our, our website was more informational that, hey, Recruiter Flow is a CRM that, uh, you know, it has these features and you can do this and blah, blah, blah. From there, we completely changed the narrative to what you can do and achieve with Recruiter Flow, right? So if, if you see uh, right on the homepage, it says, uh, uh, you know, a modern CRM for uh, recruiting and staffing agencies. And below that, it says, automate your busy work. So that yep. immediately gets their interest. Then, then you see different tabs that help that each tab is named uh, after, uh, you know, what a user can do. Or yeah, achieve. like one of the major tasks really, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, and these are the things that a recruiter uh, wants to do. And it has, you know, animations and screenshots of the real product um, that helps them see, okay, this is extremely simple, this is fast. and. Um, you know, I've been, uh, you know, for some users, they've been looking for something like this for years and uh, not finding anything in the market. Um, and uh, yeah, so then you have uh, CTAs of sign up. And even after the user sign up, we continuously, our next step in the funnel is always the demo. Um, and we try and get them uh, to the demo. Really, really good. That sounds really interesting. What type of metrics would you be sort of looking at? Because, you know, there's tons of metrics that you could look at the website from you know, time on page down to conversion rate, like what are the key metrics for you and your team then? So um, it, right now, uh, 
we keep uh, you know an eye on our bounce rates mm-hmm. uh, i'm not currently very concerned uh, with uh, time uh, uh, time spent uh, on the page because you know unless it's a blog um, but uh, we we definitely look keep a look out for bounce rates uh, and you know we are in a growth phase growing really really quickly so the key metric that uh, you know uh, that is the most important to us is our conversion rate right so how many people convert to leads um, and uh, from there how many people convert to a uh, qualified leads really really good so what do you think are some types of challenges right that maybe your business or businesses like yours face in terms of increasing conversion rate something maybe you have a, a story to share you shared already a little bit changing the narrative from a very descriptional one to a ben- <clears throat> benefits and task base anything else that you learned that sort of pushes uh, conversions um, a bit um yeah so a lot of things right so uh, keeping your page uh, uh, very very simple and very very focused on your target persona uh, is very important so you know the less jargon you use um, the better it is. So, you know, as a founder or, uh, you know, if you, you have these obviously fantastic ideas about, uh, you know, what you want to do in the market, but if the, your users don't connect with it, uh, it's, it's going to be pretty much uh, useless. So you, you need to uh, come from a very user or visitor centric perspective uh, and create your copy from there. That's first. Uh, second, um, you know, use uh, uh, different tactics. Um, it, they are old, but they work. Uh, and uh, uh, what what we've seen is that you know if we started doing exit intent uh, targeting, we started uh, you know putting out uh, uh, forms for uh, uh, you know um, capturing leads, yeah. um, and all of these things like small small uh, things uh, do end up pushing that number uh, to you know fairly uh, web standard that we uh, that we see all over the web. Very, very cool. I think there's a lot that people can can learn from there. Any more challenges that you could let us know that what was difficult when trying to improve conversion rates? Something, some information that you were missing, some processes that were not set in place. Maybe folks can learn a little bit from that. Any challenges that you face? Sure. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, it, a lot of times uh, we we you know, first of all, it's it's difficult. Uh, you know, as a day to day founder, you are in operations, you are knee deep. You know, you are neck deep into work every day to you know, get out of that mode and uh, get into uh, a user's uh, mind. So that's the first and the most important challenge for you to overcome. Um, after after you've done that, especially if you are a startup, uh, for the for first few months, you are not going to have enough traffic to do any kind of meaningful testing, right? So you have to, uh, you know, uh, go from gut and uh, uh, from there, uh, figure out how do you, um, you know, work with limited amount of data and testing that you can do, right? So what we did was uh, we created three completely separate uh, versions of our website. Uh, and, you know, first month you would have version A, second month you would have version B, and third month you would have version C. And that's how we figured out what works best, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, because we didn't have enough traffic to do multivariate testing. Okay, so you basically did a ABC testing spread out over a long period of time to then accumulate that traffic so you can find what makes that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. How would you characterize those three versions? Were they like completely different, or was it, how how should I imagine those three versions to be? Okay, okay, so three versions uh, were based on three hypotheses. Uh, one was that hey, we will give information. Uh, about Factor Flow, these are the features, these are the benefits, a fairly, uh, you know, boring uh, website. Uh, the second was the one that we currently have, which which was interactive and helped users understand what they can achieve with Factor Flow. And third uh, was more of, uh, uh, you know, a jargon specific that, hey, Recruiter Flow uh, is for proactive recruiting uh, for, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and... Uh, we ran all three of these versions. Um, unfortunately, the version that worked best uh, was the version that we ran last. Okay. Uh, and uh, no, but we, we, we saw fantastic results. Like in the first week of launching that version, we knew this was the one. Okay, and this was characterized like similar around what we're seeing today, probably, right? Something around more benefits, key tasks of the users, something like that? Something like that, yes. I mean, there have been changes, but you know, these are smaller copy based changes and not the whole. Uh, very cool. Know. Very cool. 
Very interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing those those stories. Very, very insightful. Maybe let's switch gears a little bit as we're coming slowly towards the end of the interview. I would like to learn about you as a founder and business business owner a little bit. Um, maybe maybe tell me what was been uh, the things that have been most helpful for you to actually be able to build not only one but two SaaS companies. Like what are major skills that you possess that are you know helping you to to pull that off basically? Uh, well, uh, it's it's mainly uh, the persistence, right? So um, I, I'm a I'm a software I'm a mechanical engineer uh, by education who uh, writes code uh, uh, and uh, was forced into sales because you know I was the founder of my first company and had to, somebody had to do sales, yep. um, and uh, I was really really bad at it uh, in the beginning, and I started getting better and better, and we ended up raising up a lot of money and uh, selling that company. Um, so the the key, especially if you are uh, you know into B two B or SaaS, the key is being very persistent, yep. um, and uh, you know it you will learn the ropes of uh, what you need to do and uh, get to your target. Um, so that has been my biggest uh, uh, learning so far in you know, six years of running SaaS businesses. How did you learn about sales? Like, what was your major path? Did you have a coach? Were you reading? Was it a trial and error? How should we imagine that process to be? Well, um, it was mentors and investors, right? So, uh, you know, when I first started doing sales, it was, you know, I was just about, you know, I will tell my customers, we can do this, we can do that, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, one of my, I, I, this is a very vivid story that I remember. So one of the customers that I was pitching to, uh, the CEO of that company was an investor, was an angel investor in my company. And he called me back uh, uh, later uh, uh, that evening uh, and uh, told me that, hey, you know, my product managers loved your product, but uh, they told me that you are a terrible, terrible salesman. And uh, I said, oh, why? What happened? And he said, they, they basically figured that you were talking the entire time. And this this guy he told me that you know a good sales meeting is where you talk less than fifty percent, um, and uh, that from that was the first lesson that I learned. And I read a lot of books, uh, you know, talked to some of the best salespeople that I know, um, and slowly learned the ropes. Really good. One particular book that stands out to you that was helpful? Um, well, Predictable Revenue by Aaron Ross. It's it's been um, my uh, bible as far as the sales process is concerned. Very, very good. So yeah, I want to sort of like come to an end of the interview with the last question. Like if you would restart Recruiter Flow today, like what would be one advice that you would give yourself? Well, um, you know, it, it, it's hindsight 2020, but, uh, uh, you know, I, two, two years uh, earlier, uh, my risk appetite or my uh, ability to take, uh, you know, really crazy experiments uh, was much more limited than it is today. And that's the advice I would uh, give to my, uh, you know, uh, the founder that I was two years ago that, hey, take bigger and bolder moves. You will fail. I mean, you know, you are going to fail 80% of the time, but it's the 20% where you win is that what matters and that's what pushes the boundaries. Very so cool. that's the advice I give to myself. Very cool, man. I appreciate, appreciate that you're sharing the story. Appreciate the insight of sharing the story of how your website transformed and how you as a salesperson transformed being sort of forced into the position of a sales sales member as well, being originally from tech. So um, really appreciate you taking the time and being part of the show today. Thanks a lot. Well, it's a pleasure been on uh, mine, Lucas. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, this uh, interview gets a lot of use.